All right. Welcome, welcome. Good to have everybody here on Saturday morning. This is Generative AI for newbies. So it's those of us that are just starting out. And I think all of us are just starting out. And uh, if you're an expert, well, just wait a day. Uh, hopefully you have a cup of coffee and you can uh, hang out here with me as we talk about deep fakes. Deep fakes are something of general concern. Even if you're not into generative AI, you should definitely be concerned about deep fakes. And uh, let me get my little screens here going. Uh, I thought we might uh, even just take a look, a little preview at why or should we be concerned about these things before we get into how are deep fakes made? What are some of the good uses of deep fakes? And uh, you know, what are some of the things we can do about them? This is a an example uh, of Anderson Cooper this being deep faked. Okay. This is a deep fake can... example of what is possible with powerful computer and editing. It took around 72 hours to create this example from scratch using extremely powerful GPU. It could be improved with more computing time, but 90% of people cannot tell the difference. So newscasters being deep fake. What's going to happen He's when uh, came... we have uh, politicians being deep fake? Well, that's already happening. And you may have seen an ad that uh, purportedly showed, or a video rather, that purportedly showed Jill Biden talking about how horrible her husband was as a president because of the particular uh, actions that were being taken in regards to Israel. What about this here? Let me uh, let me play this little one. You might find this one interesting as well. This is, a, this is a deep fake of none other than myself. Okay, so here's a deep fake that I made of um, what would sound like a video call of calling Hi, my mom. I don't have time to talk, but I need you to text me your license number. Once more. Hi, mom. I don't have time to talk, but I need you to text me your license number. Okay, that's a deep fake of myself. Okay, so uh, somebody could use that to scam my loved ones out of money. So what are we going to do in our personal lives? How are we going to protect ourselves? We'll talk about that as well. And then we'll talk about some of the really horrible things that are going on as far as women being harassed online. So being able to um, deep fake basically anybody that's out there. And there have been numerous cases of perfectly innocent people that have been harassed online and have been psychologically traumatized in some very disturbing ways. And so we'll talk about why why haven't these things been addressed? What could we do to address it? And I'm going to give you my conclusions. Uh, and uh, I think we're entering a zero trust world here. So I think we're entering a time when we won't be able to trust anything. We won't be able to trust the phone call that comes in. We're not going to be able to trust um, a video, a piece of audio. We're not going to be able to trust uh, any photo either. Okay, so let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, and what are deep fakes? Why should we be concerned of them? Uh, well, deep fakes are synthetic performance of a per uh, that appear to be that of a known or unknown person. And by the way, if you do join this uh, stream, uh, I see there's nobody on here right now, but I'm used to talking to myself. So uh, please go ahead and put any uh, comments that you want to add in the chat or any questions. But uh, this definition, it's a synthetic per, uh, performance that appears to be that of a real known or unknown person. Okay. And probably this is one of the first big deep fake videos that uh, folks saw. This is President Obama being deep faked. We're entering an era in which our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time, even if they would never say those things. So, uh, for instance, they could have... Uh, skip forward just a little bit, and you can see that this is actually a face-swapping technology. Moving forward, we need to be more vigilant with what we trust from the Internet. That's a time when we need to rely on trusted news sources. It may sound basic, but how we move forward in the age of information... So you may look at that video and say, well... Hmm, it doesn't seem that great. It's pretty good of President Obama, but if I'm starting to look at it, I see there's kind of blotching, there's some artifacts there. And in fact, this can be detected as a deep fake. But the problem is that digital applications tend to improve at an exponential rate. 
Okay, so that was about three, three and a half years ago now, okay, that, which is ages and ages in internet time, if you will. Okay, so digital applications also become cheap, easy, and democratized to many. They're available to many, many people to use. Okay, this is one that was, uh, oh, probably about a year and a half ago. The previous one took uh, about 30 people, about 30 days to complete. This one was one person in 24 hours. In this reel, you're going to see my amigo, Chris Umi. <laughs> He's going to introduce to you the wonderful world of deepfakes, how AI and VFX are unlocking the future of our imagination. <laughs> What's up, TikTok? You guys cool if I play some sports? Okay, remember that idea that digital applications tend to improve at an exponential rate. So we see things getting better and better. So that was a number of years ago. Uh, since those same people that made those Tom Cruise ones have gone on to make deep fakes that are appearing in real time. It's from America's Got Talent. So we have now here something that's happening in real time, the face swapping uh, being done, the deep fake of Simon Cowell being done in real time. So this is getting extremely dangerous. We're getting extremely dangerous times here. Um, so let's talk a little bit about how deep fakes are created. So the positive applications for deep fakes, the dangers, and what can we actually do? Well, they're created... Um, in a number of ways. Um, a lot of the ways that they're created is using something uh, that we call a um, uh, adversarial network. So basically, you train one AI on what President Obama looks like, and then the other one, that's the generator, generates images, and the other one is a discriminator. Okay, So if you see a GAN uh, listed as a way that this can be done, that is uh, one way that these systems are made. So here is a synthetic representation of a person, a deep fake, that will tell you exactly how these systems work. Deep fakes and lifelike avatars, like myself, are most often created using Generative Adversarial Networks, or GAN. These systems use two AI systems working against each other. One AI, the Generative Network, develops an image that predicts a person's appearance and sound when performing an action or saying certain words. The other AI, the discriminator, acts as the judge to determine if the generator's work is acceptable. In the beginning, it takes a bit for the generator to get good at making images and sounds. Just like the first time you tried to draw an animal in art class, it didn't look like the animal you were trying to draw. But with feedback from your teacher, who knew what the drawing should look like, you got better and better. Likewise, with the help of the discriminator, the generative AI gets better and better very quickly, and pretty soon, its work makes it past the discriminator. So that kind of summarizes how these adversarial networks work. Now, there are other, other ways to create uh, systems, and uh, this is from an uh, uh, article that kind of looked at what are some of the... Uh, uh, ways that these have gotten better and better and better with time. And so we can, of course, create hyper-realistic photos now of people, um, whether they are people we know uh, that exist or whether they're unknown people. So being able to use MidJourney is a tool that we talked about a couple weeks ago. Being able to use that tool to create um, uh, images is one way that you can, uh, of people, is one way that you can create these avatars, okay? Um, you can also use, uh, once you do have one of these avatars created, it's pretty amazing. You can actually say, well, let's translate that into a different language. And so here's where we're translating this into French. Les deepfakes et les avatars réalistes comme moi sont le plus souvent créés à l'aide de Generative Adversarial Networks ou GAN. Ces systèmes utilisent 
So that's another example of a good uh, use of this technology because you can imagine we could have, um, instead of multiple actors that speak different languages, we could have uh, one of these systems that could be produced using multiple languages and could actually um, then talk to people uh, that are, uh, you know, looking for information in a different language. Okay, so that's some of the positive applications. You can imagine somebody that might be like Stephen Hawking, where they're actually, um, you know, going to be losing their voice. Okay, so we are used to Stephen Hawking's kind of mechanical voice. Well, it could have been his voice, okay, that could have been used and trained. Okay, podcasters are using these things. Uh, Descript is a very popular program amongst podcasters to actually edit out a lot of the ums and ums and also to change things. So if I happen to have accidentally said, oh, we're meeting next Tuesday uh, in my podcast and it's really next Wednesday, I can go and edit that and the audio will change accordingly. And that's how I did that deep fake of myself. Okay, Other companies are working to provide um, ways to... um, provide movies that are lip-synced correctly in uh, when they're translated into a different language. So this is a, a quick video of, a, of, I believe, a French company that's doing this. It's a miracle you ever get to fighting at all. <laughs> c'est amusant, monsieur. Non, au contraire. C'est tragique. Avez-vous réponse à ça? Absolument. You have out. So you get the idea there that you can actually um, have these movies being translated in a way that the the lips are going to look just like that particular actor is saying those words in a different language and training the AI on that actor's voice as well. This is another one from uh, David Beckham, uh, an ad where he's featured and is able to speak multiple languages in that ad. Malaria isn't just any disease. It's the deadliest disease there's ever been. Se dice que ha matado más de la mitad de la población que ha existido. Billion men on the tan murit kwe. Wa ma zala taqtul tiflan kull daqiqatayn. Mais nous pouvons y mettre fin. Nous savons comment, nous en avons la possibilité. Ame ora di karvain ki zaruratan. Wa men shia rang shisi lindaran kwanju. Hivyo tunazindua kampeni ya sauti. O mwele bawari upi malaria. Speak up and say, malaria must die. One voice can be powerful. Okay, so another good example of how you can use this in a positive way. Uh, Another example is from the movie Waiting for Chechnya, where uh, there was a number of uh, folks that did not want to have their images disclosed and uh, their voices disclosed, but instead of having them be, uh, you know, have some black covering and have a mechanical voice, they instead were able to use some deep fake technology so that you actually get to see their uh, emotions, get to see their expressions uh, as they were um, uh, telling their story. But this starts to bring up all sorts of issues, right? So you may have seen, if you saw one of the first examples of this technology being used in a popular movie was back in uh, the Star Wars series. There was um, this uh, particular general, uh, Peter Cushing. It was played by Peter Cushing. He was brought back to life for um, the movie. Um, He had passed away, and his image was uh, used in that movie without... um, you know, him knowing about it in advance. So it's a very difficult question here. What are we doing uh, as far as the likeness of our image? Is it allowed to be 
uh, deep faked in some way. Now, if you're an actor, that might be a little more difficult conversation to have because uh, you're being paid for your likeness, right? You're getting paid for your likeness. But, you know, those of us that are not actors, are we being paid for our likeness? Well, here's an example from my own world. Uh, this is an, a, not a, a direct example, but it's one where we could extrapolate from. Let's think about a professor that generates a course, okay, like I do. Uh, in this case, uh, the professor had died, and uh, they, this particular institution decided, well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to have that course offered by that professor again because everything's recorded, right? And we'll just have a TA do the grading or something like that. Okay, so this student actually wanted to ask their... Uh, uh, student a question, but then uh, find out found out that uh, the the professor had actually passed away. So I don't know if I want my institution to be using my image for the next uh, hundred years to generate new courses or something like that. Or maybe I'd be fine with it if they compensated me dearly. Okay, so it's a question we all have to uh, think about. There's a lot of cases where you know we're bringing these old photographs back to life. Would you want your uh, some future generation to come and uh, take your photographs and decide that well, we're going to bring those back to life? So it's a, a big question for us uh, about our likeness. Now, if we go and uh, look at Mid Journey, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up Discord here. You'll see here that it's actually got some uh, guardrails on it. So if I uh, go to Mid Journey Bot here, and um, I was uh, to enter a new uh, text here, let me try and. Get it up to there. Okay. Let me exit out of that. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to put in a prompt here. I'm going to put in uh, imagine. Okay. So, and then I'm going to have the prompt. Um, let's say I want to say uh, Tom Hanks uh, eating a uh, watermelon. Okay, I want to have Tom Hanks eating a watermelon. Let's see if Mid Journey will actually produce this. Well, what it's probably going to do is, is uh, I will tell you it's not because it knows that, oh, I could get into legal trouble for that. It's going to describe Tom Hanks in, their, uh, in its own way. Okay, so it's going to have a prompt that's more like uh, a middle aged man um, that looks dashing or something like that. But you'll see that it gets very close to what Tom Hanks looks like. Um, let's see here. Oh, that actually did pretty well. I'm kind of amazed. So um, that yeah. actually does look like Tom Hanks eating a watermelon. Okay, so uh, very interesting. Uh, it will often come back and do something that is uh, not exactly what Tom Hanks is. Uh, and this will vary by AI. Okay, so I could say, well, I want a particular version of this, and I want to upscale it, and I could get my image of Tom Hanks eating a watermelon. But maybe I use this on a commercial uh, website or something like that without paying Tom Hanks for it. What happens then? Well, I don't know. That's, a, that's an interesting question. Um, does he get any royalties from that? Well, let's, uh, let's go on and look at a couple other uh, examples here. So let me pull this up again. Uh, let's look at a, a little bit of some of the more dangerous aspects of this technology. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, this is being used in some pretty horrible ways. So, um, excuse me there, I get this moved over. Okay, so let's talk about some of the dangers of this technology. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, I can actually make a deep fake of myself, so I can make a deep fake of my own uh, voice. So this is another version of that, where I am taking, uh, in this case, a uh, uh, something I said, and I'm editing it or manipulating it. Okay. I hate hedgehogs. I think they are so ugly. Okay, I would never say that. I would never say that I hate hedgehogs hedgehogs that they are ugly. Uh, instead, in fact, what I said was this. 
I love hedgehogs. I think they are so cute. Okay. So being able to manipulate voice may be enough to get a lot of damage done. Okay, So you can imagine this being in some political campaign, being a push-pull where um, you are starting to send out a voicemail to or a uh, call up people and have my voice saying that I hate hedgehogs, which I would never say. Okay, so that's a, a very dangerous situation. And you can also have people scamming uh, people out of their money. Okay, It has uh, happened a lot. There have been hundreds of millions of dollars that have been scammed. It was originally high value targets. Okay, So if you look at this one, uh, uh, fraudsters clone company director's voice in a 30, uh, $35 million bank heist. Okay, I could spend a lot of time researching that person that I'm targeting, researching, uh, developing the, their voice, being able to develop a system where I could easily carry on a two-way conversation um, <clears throat> using that person's voice. But now it's coming down to people like you and me that are getting scammed. And it's becoming a bigger and bigger problem. Um, what can you do about it? Well, there's not a whole lot that you can do about it in some ways. One is try to keep your voice um, protected as much as you can. But that's kind of hard in this day and age. Uh, the other uh, thing that you can do is try to educate your friends and family. So educating them about deep fakes, telling them to trust but verify if you do call them. Okay, make sure that they ask you something that really only you're, you're going to know or have a keyword for your family that everybody knows that that will identify that that is, in fact, the person that uh, is your family member and not some scammer. Okay, So that's one of the things that we can do. The other thing is uh, that's very dangerous is this whole use of... Um, deepfake technology in non-consensual pornography. So it's um, cases like this where you have a Twitch streamer that uh, her image was taken and was um, used to basically intimidate her to make her feel bad uh, for other people's, uh, evil people's uh, entertainment. There's also other reasons to do it. One is for uh, political intimidation. So actually... Um, Creating the few image, the few examples I've seen of uh, non-consensual pornography being made of males is in uh, the Middle East of uh, uh, politicians uh, that were uh, deep faked in a deep uh, in a manner that uh, showed them doing something that they ha had not done, but was considered very very bad in that particular country, and uh, <clears throat> was used to basically get them out of the election. Okay. Journalists are also finding themselves being attacked in this way. Okay. So pretty disturbing trend here, how this technology is being used. Now, what can we do about it? Well, um, I've provided a series of links here. And if you go to um, the, the link that's in the description below, they'll come to my link tree. But the first resource you'll find is Generative AI. And then on the right here, you're going to find deep fakes. Okay, so I provide some information about um, the political intimidation techniques where this is being used, the non-political intimidation. Uh, this is a case uh, from Houston where a student actually created deep fake pornography of a um, uh, teacher, and then uh, initially the teacher was fired, but um, that was the original uh, action. But then they found out it was a deep fake and started tracing it back to the student. And um, it's interesting because Texas actually has a law against deep fakes. Okay, um, and uh, uh, that's something that we don't have at the federal level. My state, Missouri, does not have a law against deep fakes. Okay. How do we regulate this stuff? Well, it gets very tricky when we start to get into areas such as politics. Okay. Making a deep fake of Joe Biden might be a little bit more difficult because it could be considered my free speech to um, make a politician look stupid or to lie about what they said. 
Uh, however, the Federal Trade Commission is looking to promulgate rules on this, and they are trying to say that uh, deep fakes count as fraudulent misrepresentation. Okay, and so you are not uh, well. You can say something that's not true in a political ad or in uh, politics. Um, actually, misrepresenting something entirely, especially about another person. Um, may be an area that uh, they can regulate. But it's very, very difficult. Where do you cross that line between f free speech, which in the U.S. we generally have um, the ability to uh, protect political fr uh, speech, has uh, uh, been well established, but uh, deep fakes, do they cross the line or not? So this is one of the, the, the uh, lines of attack, if you will is to try to regulate these things. Um, another issue you may be wondering is, okay, well, if people are making this stuff, um, it's got to be pretty hard to go against, to, to track down the person that made it. Well, what if we modified things like st Section 230, which protects platforms, right? So right now, uh, if I post a deep fake to uh, Facebook, Facebook does not have to do anything about it, right? Even if I'm in Texas, okay, they do not have to take it down or anything like that because they're uh, basically protected uh, as a platform. Uh, there is federal legislation that is looking to change that. Um, can we change um, this legislation? Um, so anyway, uh, I will uh, encourage you to explore these links. Um, I think there's a lot of things that we can do here. The other thing that I think we have to do is start to admit that we're entering a zero-trust world um, where we're going to have to authenticate everything um, that we receive as information, whether it's a phone call, and we're going to have to have an electronic signature attached to that number so that we know it's from a legitimate person, or are we going to have a system uh, where we actually put electronic signatures on videos. So when Prof C is here in his basement making, uh, that's what it really looks like with the green screen not activated, when Prof C is here in his basement making this video, um, can I electronically sign this in a way so that I know that it can't be, uh, or at least other people can know that this is the original video, that it hasn't been deep faked or modified in any way. Leica came out with a camera this past um, month that uh, will do this, that actually embeds digital signatures in the photographs it makes. Um, so I think that's where we're headed. We're headed to a zero trust world here. Well, I was hoping we could have more discussion. It looks like there's nobody online, but hopefully some folks will watch this later. Reach out to me. Um, I do respond to every comment that I get. Uh, and with that link tree, you can also even schedule a meeting with me. You can reach out to me on email um, and uh, engage with me however you'd like. I'd like to hear your opinion. I'd like to find out where you think all this stuff is going. So thanks for joining me. Have another, another cup of coffee and have a great day rest of your day.